Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am revisiting an old favourite of mine. It's the number 22A Vauxhall Cresta, which was produced in 1956. This model was the very first model I did, and I did it about two years ago. I never filmed it at the time, so I am revisiting it again and showing you maybe some improvements that I've made in my techniques over the last couple of years. Now I'll have a quick look at this. The base is interesting in that it does not have the number 22 stamped on it or molded in it. They're metal wheels and they are grey coloured and the axles have crimped ends. This one's got a bent tow hook. It's got a cream roof and a burgundy body. Now normally the headlights and grills are painted silver but due to excessive wear there is no silver paint on this model so I shall be painting that in at the end. I'm using this Mr. Hobby russet red colour as I think it very closely resembles the original. As for the off-white on the roof, I'm going to be using these colours here, all Tamiya, and mixing up a sort of an off-white, hopefully. I'll see how well I do at that. So it's good that I don't have to mix the red, because that's going to come straight out of the pot as is. Now I need some stirrers and some cotton buds and some thinners. This is my small ready to use bottle of thinners here. I do have a large one and I decant it every now and again when this little bottle runs out. So starting as is quite normal with the white and now I'm going to add the other colors to try and make it look off white. So first up just one drop of yellow just as a test to see how strong that yellow is and already you can see that it's had quite a dramatic effect on that white paint. Now I'm using this cotton bud just with a bit of water and I'm just cleaning this roof to give me a better appreciation of the original colour that I'm trying to match. So that's the white and the yellow. Close but not close enough. It needs to be dumbed down a bit so I'm going to just add a drop or two of grey. Let's see how we go. I take it in baby steps because it's very easy to go over the top and then you end up tipping away the paint because uh, you can reach a point where you've gone too far and there's no recovery and you have to press the reset button and start again and it's very wasteful of paint. So I've learned to be slow and steady to win this race. So once again another drop of grey and I keep testing it at every step to make sure I'm not wandering too far off the path of success. Now I think the tone's about right there, it's still predominantly white so I add another drop of yellow just to kind of uh, make that cream colour and I think I'm there so I simulate painting it on just with a little that little cotton bud there and hopefully that will dry as close as I can get to the original so now that's the hardest part of the makeover really it's color matching the paint so I tape it up because it's going to be sitting around for maybe eight hours and set it aside for when I need it so this base is held on with these two rivet posts here. That there at the front is just probably a manufacturing mark. It's not actually anything holding the base on. Now just have a look at this first one I did. You can see the paint on it's very sort of orange peely. And I didn't know how to re-secure the base on this first model ever that I did, which I bought on eBay. I don't know if I mentioned that. And at the time, I did the best I could, and I glued the base on with Araldite. That's a epoxy resin. And then I painted it red to match the body. And look at that. I didn't even bother to fix the toe hitch there on the back. So that's how lazy I was. Not lazy. I probably just felt I didn't know how to do it. So I set that one aside and concentrate on this one now. And I'm hoping I'm going to do a slightly better job this time round. 
Now I've uh, bought this tiny little vice out of retirement. I moved it out of my hobby room because it was in the way all the time, but I missed it so much I had to bring it back because it's handy for these little models. So I'm going to use this 4.3 millimeter drill to drill out the edge of that rivet post there so I can remove the base from the body. You've probably all seen me do this many times in the past, but I do like to show it in case this is the first video you're viewing. Now, often after doing this, you have to prise the base off with a little bit of force. But today, I was pleasantly surprised. The base just fell off as simple as that. So that's the base. One of those axles is bent there, the front one. So I'd have to fix that. There's no plastic windscreen in here or any details whatsoever. This is one of the very basic models that the Matchbox bought out. Now to put the base back on, as I said before, the last time I did it I used glue. Well this time I'm going to drill out a hole in the end of that rivet post and thread it so I can put the base back on with some tiny little M2 or 2M screws which are available on eBay from China. They take a while to arrive. But they're very cheap. You can buy them by the hundred. These little drills, you don't have to put much force on them. They just cut through this pot metal with relative ease. So it's a very easy thing to do. Now this is a close-up of the M2 thread cutter or tap as they're called. And I'm using it just in this hand chuck just to cut a thread in that hole I've cut to put the little screws in that I used to hold the base on. And I have actually used a little bit of oil here to make it run a little bit smoother. And after each cut, because you do a couple of them, you go in and out, in and out until you reach the correct depth. After each cut, I just use a little toothpick to clean out those grooves where all the metal filings accumulate. Just makes things run a bit smoother. Now this is a hand chuck with a small Allen key in it that I've cut the right angled handle off of and it just makes it very easy to put these little screws in again I say 2m screws available on eBay and they come in various lengths this is a close-up of a box that one of my subscribers sent me in an unboxing video and I was quite taken away by the amount of effort that that gentleman had put into it and it's got all the bits and pieces that I need for this stage of the game now I notice on the base here, there's a bit of hair, human hair I'm guessing, wrapped around this axle. It's a bit off-putting. I'll give it a clean up. This particular model's got the crimped end axles holding the wheels on. Real early type of construction this was for Matchbox. So to remove the wheels, I just removed the edges of the crimp with a flat file. And gripping the other end in some pliers, I can just twist the wheel off. And now look at all that hair on there. This is quite gross. Ugh, I shudder to think how long, how many years that's been on there. This is the front axle that was bent. This is a quite a simple case of just bending it straight with some pliers. And I should be cleaning these later. Now to strip the paint I'm going to be using some paint stripper so I, I hold the model anywhere I can find where I'm not going to touch it with my fingers I'm going to use these hemostats and this particular paint was very very stubborn actually and this paint stripper I use is normally really really good and quick but today I had to leave it sitting there for the best part of an hour before it started to soften up the paint. Um, normally this paint would be blistering off by now, almost instantly you put the stuff on. Um, but like I said, 
This did not react as usual. It must be old school paint, I guess. Don't know whether it's lead or what. So whilst I'm waiting for that to cook or bubble up, whatever you want to call it, I'll show you something I do. Uh, this is an aid for cleaning my spray gun. I take some kitchen towel. It's good quality kitchen towel, the paper towel. And periodically I cut up squares of it and store them somewhere on my bench so they're ready to use when I need them. And the beauty of it is that the good quality kitchen paper towel doesn't leave any fibers behind. So it's ideal for cleaning out the bowl on the airbrush. And it's also handy for something like this where I'm going to clean these wheels and I don't want to make much of a mess on the bench. So this will be uh, uh, absorbing any soap solution that I'm using and splashing anywhere. This will be uh, keep the place a little bit tidier. So just giving these a clean up, see how they go. In this instance, they weren't that good. So I color matched the paint and I ended up painting them to make them look like new. But it doesn't hurt to give them a clean anyway, because if you don't clean them, there could be some finger grease or, or something similar that will make the paint um, not adhere. It will make the paint bubble, not go on evenly. Here's a close up. They're quite clean. They're not damaged. But to make them look new, as I said, I just give them a, a matching coat of paint just with a little brush. These here, the axles, I'm just cleaning up with some emery paper. I put the axle in the chuck of my drill and gently grip it as I spin the chuck up and it removes all the tarnish uh, rust whatever you call it that might be there the bit that's in the drill truck I do separately just by hand and that's what they look like when they're finished so this is about an hour later and this paint finally has been dissolved by the paint stripper and now you can see it's coming off quite well. Definitely not as easy as normal. As I say, it's probably older paint. Who knows? Could have a high lead content. Should really get one of those kits to test this just for my own curiosity. I haven't got round to it yet. One day. And there's the base. Hairless at last. I'll just dry them off again with some little bits of kitchen towel. See how handy they can be? And if you use a whole sheet, of course, your kitchen towel goes real quick. That's why I cut it up into tiny little bite-sized pieces. Now here I'm using a dental pick just to get that little piece of paint that for some unknown reason sat in that groove and was untouched by the chemical reaction of the paint stripper. It's always a mystery how it clings on. Especially there, like when you're putting it on with the brush, it collects on those, in those corners there. You know, the paint stripper collects in the corner. you think it would be more effective there, if anything else. Anyway, I gave this a polish with some brass wool that I have. And now I give it a quick coat of the Tamiya undercoat. And hopefully that will fill in any imperfections that may be visible by the naked eye and prepare the body for painting of the top coat color. For the base, I don't often do this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't know, I don't know why, but today I decided to prime the base. Bronze wool, that's what it is I used. Bronze wool, I thought it was brass, it's bronze. So these are the wheels that I cleaned, obviously, and I'm just going to give them a paint over of some royal light gray, but it's a bit too light. And I added a drop of black in there. And this will just make them look special. It's a very watery. I've watered it down with some thinners. Just slap it on, it looks a bit light. So I think I'll go ahead and darken it again. 
another couple of drops and eventually it comes up all right. Here we go, I'll add another couple of drops to the old X1. It's a very powerful colour that, look how dark that went. Several shades, there we go, that's a better colour. It's only different by a tiny amount, but it makes all the difference. I'm happy with that. Now this is the base. Once again I'll mention, you can see there's no number stamped on the bottom of this. Just the words Lesney, England. There I just showed you I straightened the tow bar out with some long nose pliers. Looking at the detail here, there's a filler cap on the back. There's door locks and handles. Some vent there, I don't know what that's for. Maybe just for decoration. And there's the front grille headlights. There's a go fast stripe on the side. There's a little imperfection there, that little bit of hair, which I shall address, because it will show through in the top coat. And not much detail on the back. This black satin paint I use is great for the base. I always show this and it looks rotten at this stage. See it's all mottled and it looks horrible but when it dries it turns out beautiful as I will show you. If you hang around for another five minutes you'll see. So this is that russet red. It's the hobby. Oh, I'm getting a bit slap happy there. Spilling it everywhere. Oh! <laughs> oh, another bit of kitchen towel. <laughs> I'm glad I showed you where I get all that from, because you'll be saying, where does he get all those kitchen towel squares from? Well, now you know. I'm just going to put a little drop of this leveling solution in there, something I've been experimenting with. Then add some thinners, mix it up so it's really watery and it should spray beautifully through the airbrush. The leveling solution, I, I put a splash of that in, that, that's supposed to make the paint level, level off and, and have a higher shine on it. And I think it works, it's difficult for me to know. I really I should do one with and one without one day and actually do a comparison to see if it does make it look any shinier. But this turned out beautiful, look at that. The reason I didn't do the roof is, as you may have noticed, this is a two-tone colour scheme on this model, which is always a nightmare for me, because once you've painted it the first colour, you've got to paint it a second colour, and you've got to do it without any mistakes, otherwise you're back to the beginning again. And so often, it doesn't turn out right the first time round. I baked these... Uh, colours in that little toasty oven you saw. It speeds things up a little bit for me. If I didn't do that I'd have to wait maybe 36 hours before I could put this masking tape on here. Otherwise I'd run the risk of peeling the red paint off when I remove the masking paper. I'm very important here to push down on around all the little edges there, especially on the seams of the doors, with that little wooden toothbrush just to seal that edge off. That there is a light coat of some Tamiya clear varnish. And what that's going to do is seal all the edges of that masking tape. And now when I spray the white on and when I peel the tape off, any leakage will be clear varnish and you won't know it's there. Whereas if I just went with the plain white first and that leaked you'd see it when I peeled the tape off but that's not going to happen now you see because the the gloss varnish has filled any gaps in. I guess that's what I'm trying to say I hope you understand. It's a little trick I picked up offline somebody was doing it making model airplanes or trains or something. And it's the best tip of used over the years just makes it so much easier when you're doing this. I 
I'm, I always hold my breath when I'm peeling these pieces of paper off because you think it's perfect and then you go, oh, it's not, oh. But this one here is pretty close. I'm very pleased with how that's turned out. I'm going to touch up the boot there just with the very fine wash of that russet red. Now, this is important. Don't put it in the oven with the tape on. I've done that a couple of times and it ruins the paint. So always remove the masking tape and then bake it in the oven. There's that base I said as before. It looked really all mottled and patchy. But now it's a nice flat satin black. I'm going to put these wheels back and axles back on. And I've got to reform that flattened end using these mole grips or adjustable vice clamps not too sure what you call them in your part of the world but what i've done here is i've i've ground down the jaws so they're smooth otherwise they'd leave indentations in the axle now just to soften this metal up i'm using a small blowtorch from a cooking shop i heat that up till it's red hot and apparently the metal stays malleable for at least an hour and then when I squeeze it with those pliers it flattens it out again and retains the wheel on as per the original design it can get a bit hot on your fingers and I do actually have to remove that tarnishing to make the model look finished but it works quite well and it looks original which is what it's all about to me just check they roll free and they do I couldn't ask for anything better there so now everything's dry and it's ready to put the base back on now the back end there I had to push it down I put on a rubber glove and I didn't want to leave any fingerprints on it I had to actually push that back down with some force after I did this because there's a gap there you can see that but off camera, I removed that screw and then pressed with a gloved thumb and it snapped in, which is a wonderful feeling when it happened. So here's a reminder of what we started with, a very old 50, 60 year old nearly car. It's had a lot of play and it's had a lot of chips. It's even got hair on it. And this is what it looks like now. I've painted the wheels, I've painted the body, I've painted the roof, that off-white colour. And I've reformed the ends of the axles. And on the front here, I've painted a few minor details in line with what was originally on the model. I don't like to go over the top, although I did add the extra uh, fuel cap and the door handles. I gave a little bit of silver highlight to those. Just for something different. I know I shouldn't have done really but I'm sure one day someone working in the factory would have said I'm going to put the door handles on this one so this could have actually come out of the factory like that you never know for comparison here's the other one I did the one on the right is the first one I did uh, the axles look better because I didn't actually remove the wheels on that one I sprayed the whole base black and then I repainted the wheels and axles so that was a bit of a cheat Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that makeover. A nice simple one again. Vauxhall Cresta number 22. If you like it, please recommend to your friends, subscribe and leave a comment. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Whoa. Never got on my jeans. <laughs> oh, shit. It's all over the place. <laughs> it's on the carpet. It's on the floor. Oh, you f everything. Right. So I'm going to use this Rasset number 33. Uh, if I could. <laughs> if I could get the f***ing top off. F***ing tight lid. Oh, crap. I cannot get the lid off. So I shall grab another pot. 
Ah, oh, no, I've got another can of russet here. What is it? Oh. <coughs> sake. What is it with these f***ing lids? I can't get them off. <sighs> Holy s***. <coughs> no way. Holy s***. <coughs> no f***ing way. I cannot get the lid off. Bit of spit never hurt anyone. Hey! Yeah, hey! Woohoo! I got it! I got it! I got it! 